Hi everybody, welcome to this week's question and answer video I do every single Monday. I'm answering your questions from last Monday's video. Anybody has a question, please I encourage you ask me anything you want down below in the comments section of this video right here. Always the last video I made. And come back next Monday to see my answer. Let me know what you think of my answer. If I missed your question, I'm sorry it wasn't on purpose. Please ask me again. And tell us your locations. Let us know who you are and where you are. And you don't have to be specific, okay? Um, I also started a petition. I encourage everybody to please support if you haven't already. All you got to do is follow the link down below in the description box, also in the comment section. And everybody in the world is, should support this. Stop online. Stop narcissistic online abuse. Stop narcissistic online bullying which is the biggest cause of young people taking their lives today and it's growing rapidly. It really needs your help. All you gotta do is touch the, the link and just say, yes, I support it. That's it. You wanna do something else? You can share it to someone else, okay? Um, lots of channels on YouTube that you guys watch. I know you guys don't just watch mine. You watch many other channels about this stuff. Show them the petition. Ask them to support it. I don't know if people ever do that, but you know, if a channel says that they're all about this, then why wouldn't they support the petition? Huh? Thank you. So let's get started. Again, if I miss your questions, please ask them again. If I misunderstand them, tell me. Um, even if I answer your questions and it makes sense and it's a good answer, you liked it, but maybe there's more you want to know, keep asking me stuff about it. Okay? And repetitive questions and all that are more than welcome. Um, Emily from South Africa says, listening to music helps with emotions. It certainly does. It can inspire emotions and, and also help them help us feel better for sure you know we can't control our environment but we can choose it we can choose who we're around we can choose if we want to talk about negative things and we can choose if we want to be around nice music and nice environments and pretty things and stuff like this it's up to us yeah um the other way don't know where you're from let us know your location please it's critical to be honest with oneself and others anger is often fears not being expressed honestly I like that mindfulness book called 30 Days to Overcome Anger by Harper Daniels. Thanks for the recommendation. Never heard of it. 30 Days to Overcome Anger by Harper Daniels. You got somebody here that says it's a good book and you got a lot of you that are pretty angry. Yeah, I think that's the theme of today's videos, anger. 13 Paris 13. I don't know if that's your name or where you're from. Four years ago and only 41 likes. I know that's not the point. I, I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. You help me because you're relatable. We've. Oh, maybe you've been watching my channel for four years. You give me 41 likes. Thank you very much. Um, we've all had a past and trauma is something we address. This video cracked me up. I'm not sharing my story. I'd never be able to stop typing. LOL. Great videos. Don't type it. Tell it. Just tell it. There's somebody out there that wants to hear your story. Okay. And it's how we heal to not tell it means we think we're not worthy we're not worthy nobody wants to hear it that it's not important that we aren't worthy of healing uh rory from ohio hello rory when i'm on my walk if i'm angry about something i walk way faster hello cleaning the house helps when i'm angry too thanks for another great video you know it really does we, we got to express our emotions and close them Anger is such a powerful emo emotion. We tend to have to really do something physical, really helps. Um, I, my, my clients that are out there are angry, so I'll get them write down every single thing they're angry at, and we gotta read it out loud to ourselves and shout it while we destroy something. There's other things we do too, but we gotta get it out, guys. I know all of you are used to holding emotions in, not maybe not even knowing how we feel, not expressing them, not telling anybody, and look where we are, okay? So doing things really helps with anger. Exercise, it's a good time to think about the things we're angry at. Sally, I'm sorry, Sally, I don't remember where you're at. Pretending everything is okay and deep down you are hurting. Pretending you are fine when not. That would be a good example, yes, of not saying something in a relationship because you don't wanna upset your partner because you're afraid of their reaction. That is the absolute number one way, number one way to destroy your relationship. It is over when you do that. Not only are you denying yourself, but you're ruining the relationship you have with someone else. Big time. 
second worst thing to ruin relationships is pride. Cindy, hugs from Georgia. Hello, Cindy. Always so good to see you. Cindy's been with us for years. You're so supportive. You're always down there and say something, even if it's just hi. Thank you, Cindy. Thinking that in toxic relationships, hope is the last thing to die. Totally. Codependents seem to want permission to listen to their intuition and to recognize that the relationship is not in their own best interest. That's right. Codependents were taught not to protect themselves, not to care for themselves, but to always place someone else before them. And so we need permission to give ourselves something or even to protect ourselves. And then we feel guilty. Oh. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Randall Tire. Randall Tire. Don't know where you're from. Tell us your locations, please, people. Please tell us where you are. Where are you besides planet Earth? It's just so hard. People are so unrealistic. I'm a good person. It's like there are two ends to the spectrum, and they are so far away from each other. Sure, but it's not. They do bad things. We've done bad things. They, didn't know, they don't know who we are. they are. We've not known who we are. They have zero emotional intelligence. We've had zero emotional intelligence as children. We're not that far apart. Our behaviors separate us. Sure. But people aren't evil. Some people do evil things. People aren't bad. We all do bad things. People aren't good. We all have done good things. Doesn't work. Doesn't, doesn't work. I'm a good person. That's great. But when you do that, then there's bad people, isn't there? Unless we're all good, and if we're all good people, we don't need to say I'm a good one, yeah? Um, there are, I understand the spectrum, and it's a spectrum of behaviors, isn't it? And what you will see, what will serve you better, is if you wanna understand anyone, we use compassion to understand them. And it's good to see differences because we can't be, you know, walk around naive and ignorant and think and vulnerable and think that everybody's good like us and stuff like that. But, but we need to see the similarities in others. That will help depression. It will help us feel connected. It'll help us feel equal. We need to see the similarities in others and, and we can find similarities in every human being. The differences can be easy, but we need to be aware of those too. But you will understand people and who they are through compassion. And you'll feel more connected by seeing the similarities between us. Because when you do that, you'll see that we aren't that different. That we came from similar places of neglect and abuse. And, and I'm, not, I'm not condoning. Their behavior is wrong. It's disgusting. My whole life is dedicated to, you know, calling people out, helping people identify the behavior, not getting hurt. But what I've learned is they're not so different. We're all, we're all different. Don't get me wrong. But once we start putting people so far apart, you know, I'm nothing like them. They're evil. They're bad. They should be on an island. I can't understand anything about them. They're just wrong and evil. You know, it's it just, it's not good for us too. David from Michigan. Hello, David. I have a situation with a BPD partner. Of course you do. The relationship has been rocky, to say the least. We have seen each other for over a year now. It is a long-distance relationship. She lives 250 miles from me. I travel to see her several times a month. What a strain. For long weekends. Recently, she cut all forms of communication with me over a perceived slight. Thought you did something wrong. As I have gotten used to this behavior, it no longer upsets me. I'm sorry. That's part of yourself that's gone. Uh, I can remove myself from the anxiety and stress of the situation. I doubt it, not entirely. She has recently been diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer in her spine and the outlook is not good. I'm sorry. Seven months life expectancy, if that. She does not have anyone that can provide her the care and love that is important in her final months. I cannot turn my back on her. When we were together, it is amazing. When we are apart, every bit of her BPD comes out. I guess my question for you is, am I setting myself up for more abuse? Should I have gone no contact the last time? Hold on. The last time 
I saw, she was setting myself up for abuse. Should I have gone no contact the last time she blocked me? In my mind, taking care of her is the right thing to do. Someone I love, loved. Well, David, I'm not going to tell you what to do or what you should have done or anything like that. And who cares what we should have done? That's that's already over. Yeah. There is no there is no right or wrong, David. It's up to each individual to determine that. And, and it's up to you, David, to determine if that's something that you want to do or not. Watch my video I made Saturday about emotional incest and why we're like this. Why? Why are we like this? This is this is your conditioning, David. Um, I, yeah. I just can't. I'm not going to go there. You, you should have left her. She, she, you shouldn't have done this. You should have done that. It doesn't matter. Here we are, right? You have someone that abused you for a long time, and now she's dying. And now you say you love her. I doubt it. But I'm not going to tell you don't. What should I do? I, I don't know, David. The, the only advice I'm going to give you is you must protect yourself. And you must care for yourself first. First. Um, you, you put it in this way. In my mind, taking care of her is the right thing to do. And we that is completely judged by how it makes me feel, doesn't it, David? I feel like this is the right thing to do. I will feel good about myself if I do this because I'm doing what I say is me. There's nobody else out there saying you should do it. No one. Now, I don't give a shit if there is. But but it's up to you, David. And there is no should. There is no right or wrong. Protect yourself and put yourself first. Your question is, should am I setting myself up for more abuse? David, if she abuses you, then she's going to abuse you. And if you think that it, that stuff gets better while people are dying, uh-uh. It gets worse. I know this. I've taken care of people dying more than once until they die. And it's awful. It's horrible. Matter of fact, they say that you shouldn't care for a family dying for at all, really, on your own. You should have help. Even, even help that helps people like this shouldn't do it for more than two or three months. They get depressed and suicidal. Period. You're going to get depressed and suicidal. She's going to abuse you. You're going to get depressed and suicidal. Is that the right thing to do for you, David? Who cares what anybody else would do? Who cares? Some people do it. Some people won't. Watch my video about emotional incest and why you're like this. And you realize how short we are on this planet here. Right? And if you know your meaning and your purpose and you know what you need and what you want and how you feel and what you believe in and what you value, if you know these really well, you'll know what to do. It won't be easy. You're in a tough situation. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the person that you say you love is dying. Probably going to abuse you. And your mental health is going to decline rapidly. Okay? And it is not wrong to not take care of someone. Okay? It's wrong to not care for your child. That's it. And wrong to not care for yourself. Good luck, David. I'm sorry. You got a tough road ahead of you. Either way. Uh, ben from South Florida. Hi, Ben. Thank you for your last response. This is going to be my final update. Why? Why your final update? Are you going somewhere? Last week, I decided not to go to church with my boss and spend the weekend with a new girlfriend. Uh-oh. The next week, my this, this is a story Ben has shared with us over some time now uh, to make it as short as possible. Ben was in a tough financial spot, uh, and a woman helped him that he started working for. She hired him, uh, let him stay with them, with her and her husband for a little while. And she wants all of Ben's time every single day. She wants to Ben to work there six days a week for her and then for her to know everything about him after work at night and then also spend the day with her, his only day off, going to church on Sundays while she talks all about her husband to him and her marriage. Just weird. So here we go. 
now you said I you put your foot down and said I'm gonna take a day off from you to go visit a new girlfriend the next week my boss was distant and texted me she was disappointed in me and that she knows I hate my job and I should look for a new job right we don't tell people what to do or what they should do makes no sense she's not looking out for you she's saying I don't want you to work for me anymore but I'm a dumb piece of shit that can't just say it what a small-minded little loser probably never even left her damn county city just blah. anyway all because I didn't spend the seventh day of the week with her now yeah, she's married bizarre it all and you don't even know her she doesn't even know you it all came out in the end that this is after her husband went away for a month long hunting trip oh husband left for a month long trip so she just hates herself it <laughs> just wants to be distracted with someone disgusting ben run get the hell out of there it's good it'll be a good thing at least she's not doing more hopefully uh Derek Green, don't know where you're from. Please tell us your locations, 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 locations. Everyone, tell us. Where are you? Do you watch these videos or do you only ask questions? <laughs> do you at least watch for the answer and me tell you to give us your location? Okay. Planet Derek Green from Planet Earth. Hey David, can something like this happen? The moment I get got into a relationship. Oh, and also please consider subscribing to my channel. When I answer your questions every week, most of you guys don't even subscribe to my channel. It's weird. Can something like this happen? The moment I got into a relationship with my BPDX, I started getting sick every single month. As the end was approaching, I had cerv cervical headaches and almost totally emotionally numb, which was when I demanded that she behave right and take accountability for her crazy making behavior. So if you watch a lot more of my videos, you'll know what I believe in. And uh, so the first sign of, of abuse and neglect for children is headaches and stomach aches and as usual children don't get that fixed and they start relationships in adulthood that are just like the ones in childhood so it's even more stress and this stress causes more headaches and more stomach aches and start turning into migraines and getting feet of my intestine removed amongst many other things but but here you are and i'm having headaches because of stress in a relationship you're wondering if that's normal it, it's the first sign it's the first sign um, so it's stress. You can't handle the stress. The biggest source of stress for us is relationships. Second is financial. Uh, never skip the gym for even a day during the 1.5 year relationship. That's insane. You went to the gym every single day. Okay. Uh, and somehow didn't grow at all, which had never happened to me before. Instead, I lost 10 kilograms during that period. Okay, so you're obviously, I, now I know you're not American. <laughs> Somewhere else in the world. Because uh, you use kilograms and what else? You said something else you gave it away. That, um, something else you said. Anyway, who goes? So even though you went to the gym every day, you didn't grow. Oh, that's what you said. You didn't grow. Like you're still growing. Big size. But you instead you lost weight. And stress will do that. Stress will make you lose weight unless you're a stress eater and we overeat and we start gaining weight, like people with borderline. Victims of borderline usually will stress and lose weight, and borderlines will stress and gain weight. Uh, she, okay, so I fe I'm six feet, pretty athletic and muscular. She behaved herself for one and a half months at the end, which was the most peaceful period I had with her after which she monkey branched to a five year younger guy while I was sick again. Yep. You guys see, it makes sense. Been, f been four or five months, been four and a half months. I've been devastated, but haven't gotten sick at all. Gained the weight back. I don't know what to feel. I'm enraged how somebody who claims they love you can do the things like this. Um, I'm a firm believer in the fact that these people actually can control themselves and behave, but they choose not to. And there is a strong aspect of sadism with their behavior. Uh, so only some are sadistic, not all, it's a minority, and they aren't in very good control of their behaviors. And uh, they are aware of a lot of things they do. They aren't quite aware of the damage it causes or how you feel about it, just so you know. Uh, 
I would I would be totally be emotionally exhausted. I sense the satisfaction on her end. And that smirk is something I believe a lot of people can relate to. Why would someone who claims to love you try to break you down in every way while you take care of them and give them all love you have and then leave you the moment you are at your worst vulnerable? I thought to love, so it's it's because she never loved you. Yeah, I guess she didn't love you. She claims all these things and then just show the other in, within minutes. So which one do we believe? Can't have both. Yep. I can't love you and try to kill you, right? Because that's what she's doing. You kill people from the inside out. That's evil. Not love. I don't care what people say. Pay more attention to what they do. People I care about, I care about how they feel. Uh... I thought to love, I thought to love meant building each other up. Not for everyone. Regardless of what people say, I don't think it's ever love. They see as an enemy the moment you get in a relationship with them. The intermittent best behavior is just to make sure you don't leave them. And the true self is the vicious, cold, vengeful person you see at the end of moment. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I hope I answered your questions. Thank you. I'm sorry if I missed anything. Let me know. They, uh... You're right. A lot of their best behaviors is to hook you in. Yeah. So hook you in. Narcissist's best behavior is to show you how to be treated, how they want to be treated. Uh, healing family from California here. Hello, David. Hello, healing family from California. Thanks for all your thoughts. Greatly appreciated. You're welcome. Thank you. Most of the time I hear that the borderline is already posting their new partner on social media for their ex and everyone else to see. In my case, he's been like missing, disappeared, like hiding, I can say. Even hiding the new partner, nothing on social media, just like if he was no longer on earth after discarding us, totally missing. What are your thoughts on this? Why do you think some just disappear instead of sharing everything on social media like most of the borderlines, that monkey branch to the next? Why would some, what, what is somebody doing? If they won't post anything on social media, won't let anybody know anything about them, they're hiding or running from something, right? What, what is it? My guess is hiding from you. My guess is as much shame as I'm aware that he carries, and now he's not taking care of his child, that's shameful. Borderline men don't give a shit about their kids, but they can feel ashamed about it later. I'm a bad dad. We all care what society thinks, even psychopaths. So. I'm a bad dad, and that's shame. So if he's ru he's either running or hiding. He's running from himself, hiding from himself is what it is, and it's from his own shame. He doesn't want you to or anybody else to see what he's doing. Stuff like this. Probably severe depression. Does that help? Thank you. Good to see you. Victoria from the Bay Area. How do I express my anger? I take. How do I express my anger? I take a shovel and go outside and attack Ivy. Sometimes I'm screaming out loud and crying, just letting it all out, LOL. Ivy is a plant. Thank you for clarifying that. My question is, I'm working with the therapist on how to stay grounded. Do you have any suggestions that would that could help me? Thank you. To express anger or stay grounded? So the best way to express anger is physically, doing something physically. Um, we, we have to be careful expressing anger around people and how we do it, right? The best way to express emotions is talking, writing, telling someone, hey, I'm angry, but we don't yell, scream, throw things, break things, hit things, threaten. Those are all forms of violins, right? And uh, so we want to write it all out and destroy something while we scream it and read it, but we don't want to do that around someone else. Um, do you have any suggestions that could help you stay grounded. The best way to stay grounded is know exactly who you are and live true to it. At least know these five things very, very well. And I know most of you don't. Challenge. Emotional needs. How many do you have? What are they? What do you want in life? What do you want today? What do you want tomorrow? What do you want in five years, 10 years? What do you want before you die? How do you feel all the time? What are the emotions? Where are they in your body? What are they called? What causes them? And how do I make myself feel better? What do you value in this world? What are your moral values? And what do you believe in? 
and know these really well, live true to them, and you can't feel more grounded than that. By expressing our emotions, living true to our values, and having our needs met is the best way to feel good and confident and stable. Okay? Ask me anything else that you have, Victoria. Thank you. Hi, David. Jess from San Diego. Someone told me where they're located. Thank you, Jess. Thank you for your channel. I was wondering, what does DBT therapy do for a person with BPD? I'm not disillusioned to think that this is a magic cure. I'm aware it can take a decade, but so curious what it helps with them. Thank you kindly. Every one of you can benefit from DBT therapy. Don't have to be borderline. Don't have to be diagnosed or, or some therapist tell you you need it. Every one of you can, can benefit from it. DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, is a form of talk therapy. There's several other forms of talk therapy, like cognitive behavioral therapy. There's familial therapy and relationship therapy and stuff like this. But it's all talk. It's just talking to somebody. There'll be books and exercises. And for people, you know, we look at people like with borderline personality disorder, who's meant for it the most. And this is to help them understand their body, what it's doing, how to process this to feel better. And the number one source is relationships. So DBT therapy is really helping you uh, regulate your emotions and function in relationships. That's what I would say. Okay. Does that help, Jess? Thank you. And should I take it? Should I not? Probably should if you're already asking yourself the question. Wouldn't hurt. You have cognitive behavioral therapy and, and cognitive functioning is every, all the information you take in. This helps people function in relationships too. And then dialectical is a step, a little step further. Thank you. Willa from New Jersey. Hello, Willa. What are the signs? You are dealing with a toxic, self-absorbed person. What are the signs? You are losing your identity in a lopsided relationship that benefits only one person in the relationship. By the way, love the artwork in the background. Thank you, Willa. Good to see you. Willa sometimes makes little videos on her channel about the amazing cookies that she gets and other things, her dogs and stuff like that. And I just love watching her. She's so beautiful. has such a great, great personality that I know of so far. Um, okay, so yeah, it's, it's a little loaded. What are the signs you're dealing with a toxic, self-absorbed person? Well, my entire channel is about toxic people, right? Self-absorbed is just that. Everything has to relate to me or I don't get it. You're going to start talking about a story about other people I don't know or something. I don't care. I don't even listen to you. Um, I'm not going to ask how you feel. I'm not going to ask what you want, need. No, but I'm going to tell you all the time. I'm never going to stop talking. I'm never going to stop talking about myself. I'm never going to stop talking about people that you don't even know. I'm going to tell you how I feel. I'm going to tell you what I'm scared of. I'm going to tell you about my dramas. I'm going to tell you about every goddamn thing about myself, as long as I'm talking about myself all the time. And when you tell me something that doesn't relate, I can't relate to, I don't understand, you lose my interest, I'm over it. I may cut you off, talk over you, hijack, or just walk away. I won't remember just about anything you tell me, and I expect you to remember every single fucking detail I tell you which is going to be a lot. You have to remember it all and you need to react to it all and you need to be able to recall all of it. Is that enough? Somebody that goes and sp spends uh, money on things they can't afford, but just for them, right? Things like this, self-absorbed. Me, 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 me. My job, oh, they like me so much. They need me so much. Oh, this person, blah, blah, blah. This person, that person, this person, that person. It's just bullshit. Uh, what are the signs you're losing your identity in a lopsided relationship? So, the, the way that people get power and control is you paying for more than they do, for you doing more than they do, for them being the victim and you feeling sorry for them. All of these ways is how they get all the power in a relationship and it's because it's lopsided. They do not reciprocate. Be careful what you do for others. I've done way more for people I don't even care about. Fuck it. But I can't do that in people I have relationships with. Or it's unequal. I have no power. And you guys can point your fingers all you want. But give 100 random people in the world tons of power. And see what happens. Lopsided relationship that better is only one person. I'm paying more. I meet their needs. They don't meet my needs. I help them with what they want. They don't know what I want. 
I help them feel better, they don't make me feel better. I stick true to my values, they don't. Get it? That's it. Um, then you have signs if you're being in a neglected relationship or abusive relationship because emotional neglect is abuse. I'm choosing not to comfort you. Screw you. And and this causes, this is the biggest form of stress. So our body starts to be affected. Not only our body, not only our brains and our, and our, and our intestines and anxiety and, and uh, autoimmune disease and a bunch of mental illness disorders and CPTSD and all this other stuff. ADD, ADHD, but it damages the psyche all the way through to the inside. Biggest, biggest symptom is self-doubt. You start doubting yourself all the time. What's going on? What are we? Is it me? Is it my fault? All this other crap, right? Um, then uh, we, low self-esteem, low self-respect, low self-worth. Uh, start losing my relationships in my life. Start, start losing my own interests. Thank you, Allah. I think that's enough. I think. And that's it. Short video today, guys. Let me just make sure that I got all the questions. Yep. 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 I just want to make sure. Sometimes I skip them. And that's it. That's it, guys. Thank you very much. Please let me know uh, what you think of my answers. Please leave your own examples for other people. That's the best. Um, ask me questions. Leave your locations. Support the petition. Love yourself first. Love yourself first. Have a beautiful week, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.